questions. All right, so we continue with constructions. So there isn't much uh, construction methods for designing hash functions. Most famous ones are merkle damgard constructions, but nowadays we have sponge function constructions and uh, SHA-2 and all of the previous ones are merkle damgard but SHA-3 and some of the recent designs are sponge function constructions. So we have to see how we construct and hash functions. Uh, so let's talk about iterated construction. So many hash functions adopt an iterative design to accommodate a variable length input. So a merkle damgard construction is the most famous one. Message M is divided into fixed length blocks. So M is divided to con as the concatenation of many parts. So in this case, it is divided into T plus one parts. And you apply a suitable padding because since it is a variable length, we don't want to have ambiguities. So this is why we perform a padding. And message blocks are compressed one after the other to produce HI using a compression function F. HI is called the chaining variable and used in the compression of next message block MI plus one. In other words, compression function uses MI and the previous HI value to produce the current HI value, okay? H0 is fixed and specified as a part of the hash function specifications, sometimes referred to as IV. And sometimes a finalization operation is applied to overcome some attacks. So in most of the capture the flags in Turkey, this is asked, so you should kind of know that. Okay. So here's a uh, picture of the merkle damgard construction. So you have the message M, you apply a padding to it, and generally the padding is that you fill the uh, empty places of the block with a single one and following many zeros until it is filled. So you divide it into blocks. The block size is determined by the hash function design. So you have a compression function F. It takes two inputs. Initially it takes the IV initialization vector, your first, first message block. So actually the general, the, two inputs are larger than the output. So this is why we have this kind of geometric representation. So if you have a single block, this is put in, in the, the compression function there and the output is produced. But if you have more blocks, this output is again fed into the compression function together with the second message block and the output is produced and you continue in this way until you your message ends and you produce the hash value here. So whatever the input size here, as you can see, this arrow is always the same. So the output is always fixed. So you choose it when you choose your hash function. Okay. So merkle damgard construction is used in MD4, MD5, SHA1, SHA2, RIPE MD, and so on. So all of the previous hash functions, most of the time use this construction, but uh, with SHA-3, we became uh, familiar with sponge functions. So you can use a sponge construction for hash functions. So you can use a sponge function to use a, as a block cipher too. But in this scenario, we, we are going to use the sponge function for the hash function. So ID is as follows. Uh, MIs are input, this M0 to M3 here. ZIs are hashed output. The, uh, Actually, the, there is an internal state in these functions and it is divided into two parts. So R bits represent the rate, C bits represent the capacity, okay? But the important thing is that the unused capacity C should be twice the desired resistance to collision or pre-image attacks. So the sizes of this rate and capacity actually depends on the output you want. Uh, for this uh, sponge functions, we have some provable security claims. So for this reason, it kind of uh, limits of your choice of capacity and rate because you will prefer to increase rate so the uh, hash function would be faster. But if you make it smaller, it will provide more security. So idea is to find an optimal point so that you have a good function. An idea is as follows. I told you that uh, this is an internal state. Initially, you fix it with IVs and so on, and you exhort it with your part of your messages, then apply a function. This function is actually a permutation. 
maybe consist of substitution and permutation layers like S boxes and so on. So you mix this internal state with this function. Then you put the remaining part of the message block, you perform this function again, again, and again. So instead of a compression function, here we have a sponge function. So we have the internal state, we feed the message here. So this is why we call it the absorbing phase. Okay. So once we are done with putting the input, then we uh, provide the rate bits as part of your output perform the function again and provide more R bits until this Z i's uh, are enough for you to have an output as a hash function. So if your hash function is output is 256 bits, these will be the 256 bits that you want to as an output. So again, here is the absorbing phase. So really think about as a sponge, you put water here and here you squeeze it. So the water, you know, leaves this sponge. This is why we call it a sponge function. That is where the idea comes from. 